All right, well, the slides do not want to work. So I'm going to just run it without them until I can get them to um, come up. So give me one second. Josh, are you on here at all? I don't think so. OK. Um, so first update on my slide was the Equipment Manager Book Study um, hosted by Uncommon Common Sports Group. It starts June 12th, and it is the Mission Possible by Team, uh, sorry, by Tim Tebow. Help if I can read. All right, for CEUs, make sure that you um, put in the chat your first name, last name, school, district, whether or not you're certified. Um, and if you can please have your cameras on, um, that would be helpful just for engagement purposes, especially today, since we wanna have lots of people asking questions for uh, Melly and Katrina and Jeff. Um, okay. So I'm gonna work on the slides. Um, and while I work on that, we're gonna jump over and have Melly and Katrina start us off and talk a little bit about convention. And if you guys have questions, um, Add them in the chat or DM us, and then we'll um, ask them as we go as well. So, Melly, take it away. Well, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, nice to see all of you on the Zooms and hopefully in person uh, this coming weekend. I was getting a little bit nervous uh, about having to work two events next weekend, but unfortunately, my softball team did not make it out of Super Regionals. So, um, uh, I will be 100% AEMA this upcoming weekend. Looking forward to it. There's a lot of exciting things heading our way this year. I hope many of you are uh, looking forward to it. I'm sure you've all seen the schedule on the website. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go through it uh, bit by bit. I just kind of want uh, myself and Katrina to kind of, uh, I'll have Katrina come on next, uh, give you an overview of all the things that we're doing new and different this year. I'm really excited about. Uh, first off, um, that first uh, Sunday night um, is going to be a new membership meet and greet uh, done in a little bit more informal way that we've done in the past. If any of you have kind of uh, sat through those, uh, you know, we're just kind of all standing there holding a, um, a Sprite or whatever. Uh, I really wanted to be more engaging, so I gave that over to Katrina, and she'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. And uh, just to follow up on no, you muted yourself. I did mute myself. Um, and to further that point, every night we're going to have a lounge in both the hotel and in the convention center. And we really want that to be a landing place if you just need a quiet moment or we're going to have games out. We just really think that's the best part of convention uh, aside from uh, the workshops that are um, page put together. Exactly. In the committee. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, to bring you into Monday, we're going to have a lot of people, vendors setting up. Um, our, our vendor pickup. We're also going to have a, um, uh, a a nice party that evening. So we're kind of looking forward to that. Um, let me pull it up while I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I have a fun uh, um, um, board meeting that um, I'm going to love. But new, new this year for our, our board meeting is uh, not only we're going to conduct our AMA business, but we decided to put a keynote keynote speaker in that night. And she's going to be terrific, very inspirational. And I think all of you are really going to find that terrific. And as, as soon as that is over, we will head over to the offsite party for those who care to go. Um, again, that other um, onsite um, engagement is going to be open every night. Tuesday, we'll have more member registration. I think our highest people uh, being in is going to be Monday and Tuesday night, and many people leaving Wednesday or Wednesday afternoon. So, um, um, that should be good. We've got uh, plenty of um, uh, the starts in the morning with fellowship of equipment managers. The women of AEMA uh, are going to be in that. Um, Pioneer Football League uh, vendor exhibits new this year that um, Kelly uh, was really excited to share with me and I was really on board with is we're going to have luncheon trucks before all of our district meetings. And that's going to be like, basically they're shutting the whole street down between the hotel and the convention center. And there's gonna be music, all the vendors will be there. 
uh, all the all districts get to mingle and uh, enjoy that. So I'm really kind of excited about that. That's going to be a new thing. Um, our district meetings. Um, and then we are going to have um, back to basics are making a big comeback this year as well. So uh, we're going to go over um, helmets and shoulder pads, 345 and ice hockey, which is going to be a good one. Um, that's going to be sponsored by Power Plus. Uh, Tuesday, um, all sorts of wonderful things. Um, and um, the Riddell reception. I encourage everyone to make it to the Riddell reception. We've got some um, um, scholarships we'll be handing out that night and all that. So um, one thing I wanna encourage everyone to do is really engage in that vendor hall. That's another thing that's new this year is we're gonna have a stage set up. So you don't have to just kind of like stop only, you know, and go this side back down. We're also going to have breakout sessions that you can see the schedule every day. If you want to let it look, learn a little bit more. And I also in, uh, encourage the vendors to do something fun with their time up there. If they want to do like um, a helmet changing, a face mask changing uh, event. So you might see some fun and interesting stuff on that stage at different times, but um, convention is not possible without our vendors. So I know it's, um, it's a time consuming event, but I really encourage everyone to uh, come through and stop at every single vendor table. Thank them for coming. Thank them for showing and, um, you know, listen to their pitches. I think that's really important. Um, so that's basically the highlights. Um, and I, so I, I'm going to close that out. Uh, I'm going to ask Katrina to come on and speak a little bit more uh, about uh, the Young Mentor Engagement Fund stuff. Yes, so uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, everybody loves the game night. So that Sunday night is the um, game night. We decided to uh, bring in our uh, membership engagement, um, that committee. They will be set up in the back of that room as well. They'll have a table. So, um, and uh, I think closer to the time... Uh, whenever anyone wants to go in, it will be available. So it serves as two purposes. One is to have a legit game night. So we'll have all kind of cards, Uno and Jenga, um, regular playing cards, taboo yeah. categories. There's, there's a whole bunch of games that'll be set up in there, set up in the uh, in that yeah, area. More hours, so. And um, working. I have a kid. It's three or three. One second. Um. So right, so it'll be set up in the. Uh, and I'll put your pin in as soon as noon times. Oops. Yeah. Of course. Y'all don't mind muting your uh your yeah. zooms. I appreciate that. And if not, Katie, if you can, um, I think you'll be able to mute anyone. Um, if you need to. Um. So the games will be set set in the uh lounge. Uh, we just ask that no one takes the games or the cards or anything out of the lounge. Um, the membership committee will be set up. You'll be able to either meet uh, a mentor, um, and then the folks that want to uh, have a mentor, you'll be able to kind of meet up. Some of the advice that I can give for that, and then um, conventions in general, is don't be afraid to just say hi or introduce yourself to someone. Uh, they're in the same shoes that you are. They, it was their first convention at one point. And so we want to get away from um, the stigma of we can only talk to this uh, conference or this. No, we're all doing the same jobs. Um, and so we want you guys to be able to enjoy the convention and also network. It's, it, it's extremely important and not just with the equipment managers, the vendors. As Melly said, introduce yourself to the vendors. Go and talk to the vendors. And have that rapport with them. You never know when it's going to be an emergency, when you need something and you probably forgot or this other company couldn't get it. Um, those vendors are, are lifesavers. Um, and so we work hand in hand with them. So don't be afraid to speak to other uh, members from your conference when you're in your breakout session uh, from your districts. Uh, any workshop that you're at, sit next to somebody different. Um, if you're there by yourself or if your team is the first time your team's coming and just introduce yourselves and talk. Um, and so someone did ask about some of the workshops. It is going to be what you want to take away from this convention. The convention is what you make it. Um, and so I think it's very important that each member really try to look over the schedule and make a plan. Uh, it's going to be hard if you say, okay, well, I'm just going to wing it. I'll see what's going on. 
and depend, you know, say that I'm going to go to this or that one. So um, you can kind of see on your screen how the breakout meetings are set, how the workshops are set up, and just try to make the most of it. Uh, and I know Katie had questions for us. And so um, I will hand it back over to Katie. Okay, so if anyone has questions, drop them in the chat or message us. And then I had a few get sent to me. Let me just pull them up. One second. Alrighty. So this is for either of you. Um, what advice would you give a newcomer in the field of athletic equipment management who wants to excel and make a positive impact? Katie, thanks for the question and whoever brought that to our attention. Katie, what's going on? Are you doing road work? Yeah, I work in a construction zone now. Just checking, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yes. Um, uh, you know, um, I'm a, one of the older members of, uh, I'm not afraid to say that, you know, it's my 33, 33rd season at Northwestern. And I'll never forget my very first convention in 1990 in Indy. And I didn't know a soul except for uh, two people I worked with. And, uh, you know, you just make connections, not just connections, you make lifelong friends. I've made lifelong friends. I was on the phone today with Melinda at Michigan State. Uh, you know, we've been to each other's weddings. Um, we've gotten to know one another. Um, and that's um, just as satisfying to have maybe a friend outside of your work that you can kind of um, relate to. I, my, my favorite times at any convention is just sitting down with another equipment staff and how are you guys doing it? And just like, just like they get what we do. You know, I can go with a group of friends that don't work in athletic equipment management and they don't really understand what it is I'm doing. And, you know, I'll, I'll relate a story and they'll just will go over their head. But it's, it's these connections with equipment staffs that I find the most relevant in my life, professionally speaking. And so I encourage you to uh, introduce yourself to me, introduce yourself to anybody that's a board member um, that we're all going to be dressed in uh, professional attire. We've got um, some swag that uh, uh, is being sent that was uh, from our um, our um, on online store. We'll be in that. We'll uh, never be afraid to introduce yourself to you know at a, at a party. Introduce yourself. Get to, you know tell your story. Network because um, many people uh, who want to move on in their profession, it's through networking. It's who you know. And uh, oftentimes, and um, also increasing your education and, and um, most importantly, getting involved in the AMA. Um, if it's wonderful for developing your resume uh, and it doesn't have to be a whole big thing. It could be at the district level. It could be a, a committee that you're interested in. So I really recommend not only just networking but getting involved in the AMA, we are gonna need you. Katrina, anything else you wanna add there? Uh, definitely. It's, it's like I said before, it's okay to speak to someone, you know, introduce yourself. It's okay to be that first person to engage in conversation. Um, and then as Melly pointed out with the AMA, get involved. Um, if you're at your district and they're asking for, um, assistance for anything, get involved. So you know, what's going on in your organization, in your career field. Uh, it goes a, a long way and, and kind of, um, when jobs open, you know, sometimes you're going to have those, folks, hey, I'm going to be posting this soon. Or, hey, I know this position that's going to be open. This person's going to this place or something like that. And so that's a great way to kind of get in and use that networking to uh, benefit yourself. Um, and then I think education is probably the most important part of it is in order to be taken seriously, you have to know what you're talking about. And so when it comes to equipment, get into the manual, get into online, get into YouTube, get into any videos or um, posts that are beneficial to the career field and learn as much as you can. That's something that no one can take away is the education that you have. So um, have that passion for yourself to grow as an equipment manager and just study and get into the books. Whatever you can do to make yourself um, a commodity is going to be beneficial for you. One thing, Katie, before you hop on, uh, I just wanted to take a moment uh, to acknowledge the loss of Mike Short. Um, and, uh, he passed, and, and uh, I just wanted to take a moment. He's uh, one of the fathers of our organization, and um, uh, I just want, I, 
would be remiss if I didn't mention that and um, sending um, um, my heartfelt condolences to the family of him and uh, of his. And I just wanted to point that out before we talk more. Thank you, Melly. Um, we have another question that came in. Um, are there any plans to collaborate with other industry associations or organizations to further strengthen the support and resources available to AEMA members? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. I'll give more. Um, <laughs> um, so I don't want to give away too much of my speech that I'm going to be giving Monday night at the general meeting. Um, but this past year was the first year of the, my presidency and uh, Katrina's vice presidency. And it was a year filled with infrastructure of our organization. We're not quite done there, we're, we're getting there, but it was a lot of writing. Uh, I, I, I took my time to write a strategic plan for our organization. I took time to uh, write a board training manual. I remember the first time I ended up uh, as district director, um, I was sent to the board meeting. I didn't know what I was doing. I, and I didn't want that feeling for anybody. So um, anytime someone's new to the board, this manual will go out. Um, so there's been a lot of housekeeping that I've been doing. Um, so now is the time to start turning uh, the page and moving forward. And so uh, I don't want to give away too much, um, but yes. And uh, that is definitely on the table. Um, okay. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Um, sorry to get, go after your speech a little bit. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> we just, uh, okay, we have a two-part question. Um, in your strategic plan, you refer to this year as a transitional year. What specifically about this convention would you say is going to help in transitioning the association forward? And well, then the second part is following the completion, um, what would you say the focus of the members association over the next 12 months should be. Good, okay. Um, so I'm gonna hit that first one first. Um, so this is a transitional year in that I've spent the first year kind of more internal faced in um, addressing, pressing needs within the organization. Okay, so this second year, I'm going to transition my personal focus in le leading our organization to more of an outward facing um, uh, stance uh, and position. And that means starting to engage in um, sister organizations, um, uh, complementary organizations. So that's gonna be NATA, strength coaches, NACTA, um, uh, also a conference, um, 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 leads. Um, so we're going to start getting that done as soon as this convention ends. I'm going to have a little bit of time, a good month before things start heating up in between boxes. You know, I'll start writing out my uh, letters to uh, organizations. And uh, so that's my next steps for the organization. Uh, Katie, would you mind repeating that second one? Oh, it was something about convention, right? And how we're going to I can't hear you. Sorry, I muted myself. Okay, um, following the completion, what would you say the focus of the association over the next 12 months should be? Yeah, so that, that again, I don't wanna to steal too much thunder. You guys don't yawn when I say this in the general meeting, because you're gonna get a big sneak peek, but um, it's really simple. I have one goal for our organization and more specifically for our members. And that's recognition, leadership within our departments, money. I'm not playing on this stuff. We are all underpaid. There are very few of us that are paid what we should be paid. So this is my goal. I'm, I'm not playing on this. We've all been under uh, recognized in our department. We're not given the proper leadership that we're all due. We're not given um, the pay that we should have, market price. And um, that's my goal, next three years. And how are we gonna do that? Growth, growth as an organization. We need more members. We need everybody that's turning a screw, that's uh, press and start, 
on a, uh, on a washer that's caring for kids, that's providing for the safety and protection of uh, athletes under our care, we need to get you in our organization. And Once I'm we get your organization, you. we're going to get you certified. I'm not, I'm just kidding, so, make sure I didn't fall off the center of myself. Exactly. That's exactly what I was doing. Last night, wait, my sister. Can you, can you uh, just, just on that one? Um, Okay, so that's that's basically my my uh, my goal, and I'm very sincere in it, and um, I take it very seriously. The trust that you guys put in uh, Katrina and I to lead this through. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Awesome. Um, there's one last question: um, Has anything been done about attracting high school equipment managers? Because um, the AUMA has predominantly been more on like the college side. So um, when people sign up, we know who's what level everybody's in. Um, and um, I have been doing quite a bit of reach out to uh, high school equipment managers. I've been on uh, several of the Zooms this year with them. They're excited, they're ready. They have goals. I am trying to support those goals uh, for high school equipment staffs uh, across the country. Um, it's gonna be a two-way street, I need them their help, they know more equipment staffs. So we're gonna, I'm gonna be in their uh, breakout session um, and we're gonna talk through a few things. There's stuff that they need from the AMA and there's stuff that I need, the AMA needs from them. I've been engaged with them all this year. I'm glad that they've reached out to me. Uh, I'm glad to have been able to get on with them. I've listened to them. I'm working through committees uh, to get things done that they've requested. So, um, uh, that's something that I, um, in all honesty, that's where I've made a lot of growth is going to be for us. And so that's why it's so important that we engage at that level. Um, end of story. We need to get equipment managers at all levels growth, but most especially at the high school level. I'm sorry, I'm navigating two screens and it's confusing. Um, Katrina, you said there was a, a I got question you, in the chat, but yeah. I don't so, see it. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, so I will, uh, just a question about um, minorities in the field and just staying engaged. Uh, I think the main takeaway from the, the question was about burnout. Um, so I think one, we have to make sure that we implement, if you're in a position, whether you're an assistant or the head equipment person, or um, if you can implement a process that makes your life easier, um, that's going to go very far. Uh, I think just being in the field, um, whether it is minority, male, female, wh whatever it is, um, the equipment job is the same. The end product is going to be the same. Uh, and so I think that making sure that we go back to education, making sure you know every facet of your job will be helpful. And then the second part is going through and just implementing processes that makes it easier for you. And possibly talking to coaches is going to be a, a lifesaver because the more that they know who you are, not all the, the details, but how you work, how you operate, it'll make uh, your working relationship a lot easier. Burnout in this level of what we do is, I'm not gonna say it's kind of impossible to, to get over that, but it's just the nature of what we do, the constants, um, we're in demand and that's always a good thing because that means we're employed. So we don't wanna get away from that and make things too easy for the coaches. Um, so we want to make sure that we stay employed, but I implement those processes and, and that's what next week is going to be all about. So I would love to chat. Um, and there's a couple of folks that reached out, talk, come up, talk to us and we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. That's what that lounge is for. So not just the games will be going on there, but, um, it's also a time to just kind of sit, talk to one another. Um, one thing that I did forget to add was the hat exchange. 
Um, that was an idea that Melly is extremely fond of. And so we'll have a hat exchange. And so uh, it'll be a table set up there. And you bring your hat in, you leave that when you can take a hat from whatever school that you would like. Um, and so that's what that hat exchange is for. It's a one for one swap. Um, and so that'll be set up that night as well. And again, throughout the, the convention. Um, and then I will, uh, we'll have a list of all the games that will be there as well. But use, use this next week to your benefit. It's Yes, it's for CEUs, but also use it for, um, make it last more than just next week. So follow up with everyone. Um, if you get a business card from someone or you get uh, someone's, handle on social media, follow up. And I know I'm guilty of that. I'm very bad with following through with networking. Um, but I think that's a, a, a very important part is that follow through. So send them an email. Hey, nice meeting you. Shoot them a text. Hey, great times. And take pictures. Hey, uh, uh, just so you know, this is a picture we took when we were um, looking for tickets for, uh, <laughs> for the games. Uh, but just make the most of next week. I want to quickly address this burnout. Uh, as you can see, I'm not at the office today. Um, I have uh, I took yesterday off as well. I got we traveled back from Alabama on Monday. I hadn't had a day off in probably since February. Um, I'm burnt out right now. And uh, a don't be afraid to say it. Acknowledge it with yourself. B I can't tell you how many weeks vacation I have. I have something like 10 weeks vacation. It's pretty sad. Uh, you know, for me to be able to take 10 days, it seems impossible. But we've got to start doing it. We've got to start taking our time. Why, why, are, why are we not taking our vacation time? We've got to have people accommodate us now. And we're just going to have to start st standing up for ourselves a little bit more. And I don't mean in a assertive way that's um, whiny. I mean, like, this is reality, everyone. These are, if, if our direct reports don't know what kind of hours we're putting in, what we're doing, then they don't know. So I always try to encourage people to communicate up, right? Communicate up, mentor up, uh, teach up. I was just in Alabama and there was, uh, our site rep was there. And they are, I won't say what school, but they, he, he's an AD at a, uh, a smaller school. And, um, and he goes, um, hey, what do you do? And I go, I'm the uh, equipment manager. He goes, oh, you, you guys travel with one. I'm like, yeah, I also travel with four helmets and five sets of uniforms. And it's a big equipment uh, sport. You know, it's not, um, it's pretty necessary, especially postseason. And he goes, yeah, I'm having a lot of trouble hiring, you know, I'm like, well, how many equipment managers do you have staff? And he goes, I have one. And uh, he goes, well, how many do you have on staff? And I go, we have seven. And he goes, yeah, I can't even get athletic trainers. I'm more worried about that. And, you know, I took that opportunity to tell him that equipment staffs are not more important, not less important, equally as important to the success of his athletic department. I took that opportunity to educate him just a little bit and say that equipment staffs are with those kids every single day, just as much. Um, and to, to think about that too, and nothing's going to uh, improve quality of your student athlete experience than having a fully staffed equipment staff and athletic trainers. And all of the, I would say the three pillars of an athletic department, strength coaches, athletic trainers, and equipment staffs. So if you have those three pillars very strong, the student athletes experience will be much better. So I took that opportunity to say something. Whenever you have an opportunity, say something, let them know, educate, mentor up. Um, and I think over time, these stories that we can tell, the, the more we can explain what, what it is that we do because they have no idea what we're doing, but that's on us. That's on each of us. If the people that are paying us don't even know the full breadth of what we're doing, then you're shortchanging yourself. So it is hard to do. It is very hard to do. We're all independent people. You gotta have to be, be a self-starter and independent uh, to be an equipment manager. And you know, just 
um, you know, you just get in the thick of things and you don't look, look out of your equipment room or step out of them. That's on us. And so that's my call out to everybody is to step out every so often. If you're, you see uh, people at events, go stand next to them, get to know them, build relationships. And uh, that's going to serve you in whatever level you are. Um, so I'm dealing with my burnout. I'm taking two days here. I'm going to go back in the office. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. The laundry will get taken care of. And uh, take your vacation time. And I think what's most about burnout, I think, is like we, I feel like we're, we don't feel like we're respected and paid enough. And whatever I can do to help that, that will help with burnout. I think if you, you feel burnt out, if you don't feel satisfied with very core things, and that's pay and the amount of hours you're putting in, and a thank you, that helps with burnout. Sorry for my soapbox speech. Katie, can I no, step in great. for Thanks. a second? All you, yes, go for it. My name is Clifton Perry. I'm uh, the head equipment manager at Princeton. Um, I've been an equipment manager uh, here at Princeton for 19 years and 26 years overall. I, as the past president, first of all, I'd like to say that that Melly and Katrina and the the board has done a great job this year transitioning over from uh, from the past. Uh, I, I, I'm just gonna. She just told you to reach out to her. She just made herself available to you. She's telling you that she's burnt out from the from the spring seasons, but she's encouraging you to reach out to her. Don't take that lightly. Take full advantage of that. Because I can tell you that when I was president, I made those remarks and people didn't come out. People didn't introduce themselves. People didn't say hello. And I'm not saying that because I'm bitter or frustrated about it. I'm telling you this because as somebody who's been in the profession as long as Melly and Katrina have, if they're willing to share their wisdom with you and you don't take advantage of it, shame on you. These women are leading by example and they are encouraging you to ask them questions and to interact with them. They wouldn't do that if they weren't sincere or genuine about it. And I really hope that you take full advantage of that opportunity. Thanks for letting me share. Clifton, thanks for that. And I think that goes for you as well. I, you know, I encourage anybody uh, to reach out to Clifton. Anybody who's got a gray beard, reach out to him. Anybody's got gray hairs, reach out to them. We know a thing or two. And, you know, that's why I stepped into this leadership role. I mean, I'm not getting paid. I want the best for our organization. It's really quite simple. Thank you for that, Clifton. Awesome. Thank you both so much, uh, all three of you. Um, so we're going to get to Jeff King. He is a vendor, and I really wanted to have someone from the vendor side speak. So if this is your first convention or you're, it's been a while, just like a vendor perspective of how to go about vendor halls and things like that. So we're going to have him speak for a little bit. And then I've been just kind of scrolling back and forth on the screen so everyone can read it. Um, people have been sending in their tips and tricks for how to go to convention. If it's your first time, it's been a while. Um, Go ahead and read through these. Um, they're really great pieces of advice of how to um, go about networking and how to meet people. And, you know, Melly and Katrina have mentioned quite a few of these um, things, but this this was stuff that was sent in by other um, equipment managers. So if you have some, send them to me and I'll put them on the screen. Um, but now we're going to have Jeff King talk for a little bit. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> um, I am in the same situation Melly is just in a different state right now. Uh, May is a very hard month for most of us on the vendor side of things and uh, I am at home for the week waiting to uh, head to Oklahoma City next week. But wanted to give you a quick, uh, I work for McDavid, Shock Doctor and Cutters, a company called United Sports Brands. Um, but I want to give you a little background on my story and how I've gotten here and it very it parallels with convention and your world so I started out uh, 
got out of high school, wasn't real studious, went in the Marine Corps, had to learn a little bit of, of uh, work ethic and uh, some things like that, and got out of the Marine Corps and didn't know what to do with myself. So decided, uh, started going to school and, and uh, working at a hockey store and worked there for six or seven years, actually owned a little part of the business um, at the end. And my partner and I had a disagreement on how we should go forward in this business. So I left and went and worked on the team sports side of things um, and worked as a, a salesman for a number of years and had very good input in what we were doing. Um, but also with that came going to a buying group show twice a year. And at that buying group show, I'm, I'm a, a social person naturally. Um, I met a lot of vendors at that show who were selling us product. And one of those was Bob McDavid. And uh, about four or five years after we had met and become friends, he offered me a position taking care of the pro and college teams in the Northeastern United States. So I took that position. It had been 12 years I'd been trying to get on uh, on the manufacturer side of the fence. And, and I took that position and it's led me here. I'm basically, I've been with uh, McDavid now for 18 years, uh, working on my 19th year right now. And uh, with, with um, a six month hiatus where I uh, went and worked for another company and then quickly came back. Uh, but uh, those interactions for me at, at those buying group shows with vendors created the opportunity for me to, to move on. Networking, uh, Melly and Katrina both hit on, on pretty much all the points that I was going to try to hit on. Networking's a big deal. Say hello. I've got down here. You know, the one thing I really, really like about this industry is I, I say it all the time. It's uh, we're one kind of big family. I call it the equipment family, EQ family. Uh, between the vendors, our side and your side, I, I don't know very many uh, industries that work together hand in hand that are closer. Um, I have made in my 18 years doing this some of the best relationships and friendships along the way, you know, where we we don't talk shop all the time. We, we actually are friends. I always, <clears throat> excuse me, encourage people, you know, if, if you need someone to talk to reach out, I'm here for you, whether it's work wise or whether you just need to get something off your chest, I'm here. So for me, that's, that's kind of a, a, a big deal. I've, I've got down here. Don't be shy. Say hello to everybody at the convention. Pretty much everybody in this industry are, are great people and they're all going through the same things that you're going through. Um, my next is hit all the boosts. I've, you know, I, I believe in that. If you're an Olympic sports person, um, stop by the Douglas booth and say hello to those guys and, and introduce yourselves to them. It's, it's not even a, you know, not even a matter of business at that point, but you never know uh, where, your journey is going to take you. Um, I, I look at uh, Jalen Anthony Stone in Michigan. You know, he wasn't doing hockey two years ago. Guess what? He had to fill in and, and did a, a, a dang good job filling in at the University of Michigan in their hockey department and their, uh, with their men's hockey team. So, you know, these things, you never know where, you're, where you're, uh, your journey is going to take you. Um, keep your eyes and ears open. That's, that's another thing. Just, you know, take a lot, take all this stuff in, um, a lot like the equipment side, the, the vendors, some of the, the vendors that are out there have become very, very good friends of mine. And they all are pretty, are good people and, and think the same way I do. We are here to help you, um, in any way that we can, you know? And I think for the most part, you have competitors out there, but I think for the most part, if somebody does something different or better than you, if you called me looking for something, I might point, I'll probably point you in that direction, you know, uh, give so-and-so a call. So we're here to help you. 
that's all I got for you. Any questions? Awesome. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate that. It's always nice to hear from um, the other side. And I always feel that we do have that good relationship with vendors. It's like we're one big family, but it's always nice to hear it from other people as well. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank um, you for having me. All right. I don't, no more questions have come in the chat. If anyone has any more questions, send them our way. Um, anything else? Jalen, are you on here? You want to say anything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as we're going through this um, presentation today and Jeff, thank you for joining and Melly, Rashida, thank you so much for uh, everything you, you guys do for us. Uh, everybody, thank you. Everything you do. Katrina, thank you for being on the call today. Um, I was averaging up the numbers from the attendance of these workshops over the last uh, 11 months and through 11 workshops, we've had 70 participants on each call, averaging 70 participants since uh, January 1st, the six calls we've had the second half of the year, we've averaged 93, uh, 93 people each call. So uh, thank you all for your participation in this. Thank you all for uh, showing up each month and engaging. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue to uh, uh, continue uh, to build this over the next few years to make it even better. Uh, if you have any suggestions on topics or structure that can make these calls more beneficial, uh, reach out to me or Katie uh, and Katrina and Melly. Thank you so much for uh, hopping on today and thank you for your guys' leadership. Uh, a lot of new things to look forward to a convention this summer. Uh, really excited about it. So thank you both for uh, all you've done over the last 12 months. All right, we have one more question that just came in um, from Spencer. Are there any plans for the AEMA to leverage technology and online platforms to reach and engage potential members who may not have opportunity to attend convention in person? Yes, this, this is them. This is one of many opportunities. There's district meetings, there's... Uh, this particular Zoom, high school has their particular Zoom. Um, but there's some holes, there's some opportunities for us as an organization to, as I said, turn outward facing. And so I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit more. I would really like to get our YouTube channel up and running. We need to be experts in the field and have a YouTube channel um, set up where we have just some simple things that people, you know, who may not even know what an equipment manager is. How do you, um, um, put a grip on a bat? Just a quick two minute video. This is how you do it. Uh, how to restring a glove, how to, uh, change a face mask. Um, just that that's the next step, I think. And that's going to need a, a lot of work. That's going to be a lot of work. So, um, we're, we're kind of going to have to figure out where that's going to lie under which committee is that going to be education committee is going to be an engagement committee. Um, so there's going to be some discussions with people at convention and, um, also not only just that, um, maybe opportunities to watch videos online and then, um, kind of like the journal, the opportunities, you read the journal and then you take the test something like that uh, as well for um, workshops. So there's a whole lot of growth for us. Um, I'm trying not to um, spread us out too thin, um, meaning what we what I what I can accomplish and what I want to accomplish and what I hope to accomplish. So I've got to really kind of um, be very thoughtful in what I, engage with in this second year. And I think my number one goal at this point is reaching out to uh, uh, organizations. I think that's gonna be the, the next big step for our organization. And that's where I'm gonna be spending quite a bit of time this next year. And if that means putting on a suit and, uh, um, and, and hitting up NACTA and having a workshop 
or having a workshop at NATA or uh, at a high school convention or uh, wherever, whenever, wherever, we need to start showing up. And that's my goal over this next year, start showing up, telling our story, talking about our importance. And um, that is the next major uh, need for our organization in my estimation. And, uh, and growth is number two. And then from that, all these other great ideas that we got floating and bubbling within everyone. Everyone's got a great idea and I'm here for it. I'm full of a billion great ideas, but I really have to narrow that focus down for us uh, moving forward this next year. So um, keep bringing those ideas to me. Keep emailing me, texting me. Um, don't be afraid. I, I am literally open to any idea that you have. You'll never hear no out of me. Uh, it's like, ah, that's stupid, or that's, I don't know, or what it, I, there's no such thing literally as a bad idea. Sometimes we're already doing it, you may or may not know it. So, um, or there's processes, but um, uh, I'm excited for the ne this next year. I'm excited for convention. I'm excited for growing our association and making your lives better. It's just simple as that. I think in order to accomplish that though, we, we need members to, to step up and, and get involved. So some of the things that you have questions about, um, things that you guys want to see, we can do that. We need, you know, the bodies and, and the minds to help accomplish that though. All right, so on the screen right now, I have the other, the next three um, sessions. Uh, and then we're also working on planning out what next, Next year's sessions will look like um, going forward. Um, we are putting the um, these videos on YouTube. I'm a little behind um, schedule. So hopefully the rest of them will be up this week. I'm still learning how to use YouTube properly. Um, so subscri subscribe to our page and then you'll get the notification when they come up. Um, you'll be able to come back and check on those um, videos and such. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any more questions, there will not be a QR code for today. Um, and Jalen, you got something to say? Uh, yes, I just, was just going to add to those upcoming sessions that Katie has on the screen. Uh, those could, the uh, topics for those could possibly change over the next month, depending on a couple of things. But once we have the actual uh, set in stone calendar for the next 12 months, we will have Josh send that out to everybody on the email chain as well. One last thing I want to say. Okay. Uh, Katie, sorry, I'm going to hop in here. Katie, Jalen, and others, they saw a need. They wanted more engagement. They used technology. They found Zoom. And guess what? They're putting the work in and they're doing this stuff. So I commend you. I really commend you. I think you guys are doing a terrific job. And I'm so glad we got this going. And um, that's how it's done, right? They, they didn't just come up with an idea. They engaged with it. They have uh, their meetings. And I think you guys are doing terrific stuff for our organization, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Melly. Thank you, Melly. We appreciate your guidance. Um, Katrina has one more thing, and then I have one more thing, and then I think we're done. Uh, so so you're <laughs> really quick. Um, we uh, make sure you guys are looking at the newsletters that are coming out. Uh, this past one has a lot of information for the convention. Um, also, uh, CEUs uh, will be using the QR codes again. So make sure you have access to your, um, your login uh, or your profile so you can get those after the sessions. And also, um, thank you for those that took or participated in the team store or the online um, team store. Um, make sure you kind of wear your swag when you get there. Um, and there may be, I think, another option or uh, opportunity. To, there will be another opportunity to get more AMA um, gear from the online store that will be set up during convention as well. So if you missed out on the first one, um, you could still have time to do that. Um, but again, it's just another thing that we're just wanting to make sure that everyone is um, has like some part of AMA, uh, whether you're on a committee, a board, um, but the last thing that I had was your executive board has been doing amazing work and it's been nonstop. 
So um, uh, they're here, although all of them aren't speaking today. Um, these folks have been working uh, tirelessly to make sure that this organization is, is growing and continues to thrive. Um, and so get to know your board, get to know the executive board, your district directors, put in a lot of work on top of their already um, taxing job. So make sure that you have the opportunity just to say hi. Um, and I think for that last one, really, um, okay. Um, so the um, the food truck, um, did you want to go ahead and knock that out, Kelly? Or? Sure, I just want to make sure everybody knows how to get the food truck coupons because you will need a coupon when you're ordering your food at a food truck. So Tuesday morning when you're at the exhibit hall and you go to the back of the room to scan for CEUs and attendance, there'll be a separate QR code that you're gonna scan as well for food truck and you'll get your coupon at that table when you, um, right there it is, pick it up in the back on Tuesday morning and present that to the food truck when you're doing that. So it's that simple for you'll find them. They won't be in registration, it'll be in the exhibit hall. Okay, awesome. Um, last thing before we wrap up is uh, if you are part of the mentorship program, I sent out an email today talking about the game night and a couple things going forward. So check your emails for that. If you would like to be a part of the program, you can see us. Um, thank you, everyone. If that, no one has any comments, we are good. Good. Thanks, Katie. Katie, can you can you uh, stay on? Thank you, Walt. Thank you. Katie, as people are hopping off, uh, I looked at your notes that you sent me uh, from the document. I made some changes. I added a little bit to it. Uh, if you have any time to look over it before I send it to Kelly, uh, just let you know I sent that to you. Yeah. Give me one second. My, my, my internet's going in and out. Alrighty, let me look. So I keep running it and then Peter was like, we don't want to work anymore. So there's a hot mess to start. So that's on me. <laughs> but we recovered. <laughs> oh, you're okay. I uh, I thought Josh just sent it to you. Right, I have it up. You don't have to uh I'll hop off here and you can uh, but I didn't realize I it. it. So that's where you didn't do what? You didn't realize you were, you didn't realize oh, that you were. I don't know, you're cutting out really bad. Can we just. Uh, I'll call you. Yeah, I didn't realize I was leading it. Like he had sent it to me. I just didn't know that part. But it was all good. It worked out. 